Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Zakla khair for coming back to another session of 99 Names. Inshallah, today is the 26th session, and we are going to be covering three more names of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last time we had covered uh, four names. So those four names we had covered uh, had some concept to do with forgiveness, with Doba. And so the four names were, the first was Al-Bar. Al-Bar was the one who helps relieve burdens. The one who is also not just the reliever of burdens, but the one who does good, the kind, the source of goodness. And uh, the, the other name was At-Tawab. At-Tawab was the one who accepts repentance, the one who leads to return. Uh, Al-Muntaqim. Al-Muntaqim was the one who repays justly. Al-A'fu was the one who forgives, the pardoner. So from this name, we see uh, a lot of uh, different connotations of open-armed receptiveness, open-armed forgiveness uh, from Allah to humanity, to the creation. And these names as a source for us to aspire to not just be better in terms of how we practice our faith or how we do things ritually, but how we are in terms of just being, being good people, being honest people, being people who not only accept the wrong that we do, accept the mistakes that we do, but we, we work to rectify those. But then in turn, because our Lord is forgiving, because our Lord is the one who accepts repentance, the one who pardons, the one who relieves burdens, the one who is the source of good, so too do we inspire to be sources of good, sources of relief, sources of love, sources of forgiveness in our own contexts, in our own communities, to our own families, so on and so forth. And so, inshallah, as I mentioned today, we'll be covering three names uh, of Allah, the three names are Ar-Rauf, Malikul Mulk, and Dhul Jalali Wal Ikram. So, inshallah, let us go ahead. We'll start with the Asma'il Husna. Uh, once we do the Asma'il Husna, we'll go ahead and jump into these names, and you'll see these names there. But we will be crossing the, I believe, 85 name uh, mark today. So, then after this session, we'll only have 14 names left. Uh, so, alhamdulillah, there's, there'll be uh, it's 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 coming to a close, but each other said like uh, like Brother Omar said yesterday in his khutbah, there's still a lot more to go. It's a lot more a uh, lot more ball to be played, inshallah. So let me go ahead and share my screen, and we'll begin with the Asmail Husna. All right, Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Huwallahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Al-Malik al-Qudus as-Salam المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر الخالق الباري المصور الغفار القهار الوهاب الرزاق الفتح Al-Alim Al-Qabid Al-Basit Al-Khafid Al-Rafi' Al-Mu'iz Al-Mudhil Al-Sami' Al-Basir Al-Hakam Al-Adal Al-Latif Al-Khabir Al-Halim Al-Azim Al-Ghafoor Al-Shakoor Al-Ali Al-Kabir Al-Hafid Al-Muqid Al-Hasib Al-Jalil Al-Karim Al-Raqib Al-Mujib Al-Wasi' Al-Hakim Al-Wadud Al-Majid Al-Ba'ith Al-Shaheed Al-Haq Al-Wakil القوي المتين الولي الحميد المحسي مبدي المعيد المحي المميت الحي القيوم 
الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعلي البر التواب المنتقيم العفو الرؤوف مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المقصد الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار نافع نور الهادي البادي الباقي الوارث الرشيد الصبور So with these names, inshallah, we begin with the uh, names that we're discussing for today. As mentioned, today we'll be discussing Ar-Ra'uf, Malik al-Mulk, Dhul Jalali wal Ikram. So these three names, inshallah. Ar-Ra'uf, to begin with, is a name that has so many different warm feelings around it, so many different warm connotations because of the meanings. The meanings have, uh, is translated as the kind, the mild, the tolerant, the compassionate, the friendly. And the root of this name has the meanings of showing mercy, having pity, to being kind, having mercy and compassion, kindness, benevolence, gentleness. And so uh, uh, Ar-Ra'uf, in a sense, cr creates this process that leads to a topic that we've talked about in so many other names that other names do reach out to as well, but a, a, a concept of leading to softening the heart. Uh, in a sense, this it's called Rafa, um, and this uh, compassion and kindness that emanates from this name, that this process gets expedited, this process is whole, whole and part and parcel of this name, in a sense of softening that heart, but in a way that is one of gentleness, is one of benevolence and mercy and kindness. And so ar rauf really awakens within us uh, that quality of softness within that heart. Uh, the heart, like I mentioned, we go through life. There's so many different layers that gets piled on, um, but it goes through that sense and softens the heart with kindness, but also engenders that kindness within the heart and engenders that friendliness that's in the heart as well. And so we, we see with this name, as that happens with our heart, as that happens with uh, ourselves, in a sense, we become softer, we become kinder, we become more friendly, we then reduce the hatred we might have, the malice we might have, and we, we, we embrace the the folks around us, we embrace our own selves from a lens of kindness rather than a lens of suspicion or a lens of hate or any of these different lenses that will separate us. And so as we as we go through this name, Ar-Ra'uf doesn't, as I mentioned, help us endure or overcome malice. And it doesn't help us specifically just, you know, take it, uh, you know, and just say like, hey, this is a temporary solution. It actually, when incorporated, helps eliminate any response to malice. So sometimes we respond to malice with malice. Sometimes we proactively respond with malice just because we have certain sentiments about some people or anything like that. Ar Rauf really goes in and takes out the roots. So it really excavates the roots out that are uh, feelings of wanting to act out of malice, act out of hatred, act out of prejudice, act out of ignorance. And it embeds those and replaces those with kindness, with softness, with gentleness, but mindfulness and, and mercy. So it helps change the way we respond, but it also changes the way in which we deal with the, the negative that comes into our life rather than the ones that goes out. And so we feel ourselves with this name enfolded in kind of a light of kindness. We feel our, ourselves to be not just enfolded by a God that is caring, is loving, but is kind, is merciful, is compassionate. So you think about the nicest person in your life. Think about the most kind person in your life. And as with any case that has kind of been mentioned in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, that now think about if how nice this person is, how, how much nicer, uh, how much more nicer will the creator of the one who created this, uh, created this person, created this niceness, the source of this kindness, how much kinder would the source be? And so this name really then, we talked about how each of us goes through life. We 
uh, come out in one sense or another with different wounds, different scars, different types of brokenness as human beings were naturally broken. And so this name really helps us not only tend to the wounds that we have, but tend to the wounds others might have, the shortcomings we might see others having, the different things that we may see others have that we we don't have in a sense that uh, we see that as a shortcoming, we see it as a wound, we see it as a scar, we see them do make a mistake and we, we, we attach it to them as if it's all, all there for the rest of their life. But this name helps us see it from a different lens and helps us touch on the wounds of others, helps us understand the wounds of others, but also understand the wounds of ourselves and not for any other purpose, but to heal but to heal and to improve. And so this name helps us see other shortcomings, our own shortcomings, not from a lens of, of like, you're not enough, you're insufficient, all this negative energy and sees it from a lens of gentleness, from a lens of kindness. And so uh, as I mentioned, it also opens the door. It opens the door into uh, allow us to go into repentance before we make a mistake. So it creates that mindset, it engenders that mindset of proactive mindfulness in the sense that I'm about to make a mistake, so I, I will proactively repent. Whereas a mistake that you make maybe after after you make a mistake, uh, Ar-Rahim, the second name we had discussed in the series, Ar-Rahim is the one that neutralizes and specifically uh, removes those those sins or those uh, those and to accepts those repentances in a sense that that's where that's where that mercy comes in. But before you make any mistake, before you even make an act, Ar-Rauf is is what creates this, engenders this, fosters this sense of. Uh, seeking repentance before you even do something wrong because of that, because of that level of kindness that's, that's brought in because of that level of awareness and love for others and for yourself that you do it proactively. And so we see in this name that the grace and kindness of Allah are all embracing. And so what we can take away from this name, we want to take, take the time that we have the limited time that we have in this world. We want to make sure when we spend it in the time of uh, talking to the talking to our elders, not just talking to, but sitting with, listening to uh, people who uh, society may deem on the margins, people in our families, people who we might not give the same time of day to as we may give to our jobs and stuff. We think about maybe our parents, we think about the elderly, we think about even children. When children come, we sometimes dismiss them and whatnot, but uh, really, really sitting with them and listening to, to what their needs are and talking to them. Um, he, hearing out people, just listening to people's stories, but giving people that space, this all comes from Arauf. This all comes from that kindness. So uh, when you are doing these things, this is a reflection of that divine spark of Arauf. And so what it's, it's, an, it's a motivation for us to keep doing that because this is something that Allah loves. This is something that Allah has created. And this is something that we can do practically in a sense that, you know, when, when people say like, call your mom, like, you know, just in a sense that talk to your mom. And this is sometimes we struggle with because we have so many things going on, but just even that initiative, something as simple as calling a loved one, touching base with a loved one, anything like that comes from this, this root. And so as we close out with Ar-Rauf, we see that it is the attentive, it's the watchful, protective hand whose outer expression may be soft or sharp, but it leads to mercy, it leads to gentleness, it leads to when it takes out those roots of the uh, the malice that we have, the ignorance that we sometimes have, the uh, just sometimes that 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 those roots of really corruption that 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 life just puts into us and embeds into us sometimes it does take a little bit of effort to remove those roots so you if you've gardened before or just helped out any kind of planting you know that sometimes when you're with a deep rooted plant you sometimes have to kind of pull it out it can't just like you know you can't just use like a little toothbrush or a little shovel here you have to really sometimes dig it out and, and take it out and so sometimes it's kind of pulling that out but it replaces that gap that's left, that hole that's left with a love, with a mercy that's there. And so Arauf in this sense reaches, but also soothes. And it also calms and it fills our deepest fears, our deepest shortcomings with a lens of love, with a replacement of mercy and compassion. So inshallah, we move to the next name, Malikul Mulk. Malikul Mulk is translated in many different ways, but as the ultimate owner, the ruler of power, the ruler slash owner of the dominion, the Lord of the worlds. And it shows in this name that every manifestation in the universe 
is within the dominion. So when we say the dominion, the mulk, we, we can see it as everything, just in, in a sense like that. It's just the, there's no one dominion. It's everything that's there. And so this name shows that everything in the universe rests entirely on Allah, that everything that has been created has originated from Allah in one way, shape, or form, and that ultimately everything is in Allah's hands. As expansive, as big as it gets, it all still has one common source. And so no longer do we see... If we internalize this name, no longer do we see life or existence as meaningless. We can live in, in this time, in our present time, in our short, really finite time. And when you look at the spectrum of life, just even the origin of the earth, and you see the life spectrum of the earth, and you see how many years, you know, just the average lifespan is maybe 75, 76 years or whatnot, and then you put it on the scale, you can't even see it, just because that's how then it would maybe be a line at most. But like you look at the history of the earth and you're just like, okay, I'm literally just like a, like a snap in time. But in this name, when we reflect on it, we no longer see, like I mentioned, life as existent as, as, a, as a meaningless, but we live in time while we bear witness to eternity because we see how, like we see what Allah possesses, what Allah creates, what Allah has created, and from our vantage point here, we see all that was, all that is, and all that will be just because we acknowledge al -Malik, or -Mulk, that Allah is responsible for all of this. And so what we see in the, in, in the human, in us then, the universe that is around us, the world that is around us, we mentioned this in the first few sessions, is a macrocosm of what is reflected in us as humans, as a microcosm. So we mentioned that you're created from star stuff. You're created from that divine spark. You're created from uh, these, you know, celestial elements that, that are out there. And so it, it gives us a sense of connection. And when we look at the root, we see even more connection to this name when we relate it back to the divine in the sense that it carries meanings of rule, reign, supreme authority, and this is mulk specifically, but uh, dominion, dominance, power, sovereignty, ownership, and then uh, malik, of course, having the connotations of ruling, of owning, of this active, uh, this, this active portion of this name in terms of ruling, owning, possessing, holding. And so this name reminds us that we've, in, in, under the malikul mulk, as malikul mulk, we've been sent as representatives in a sense so like the in in the quran allah says that i'm appointing a khalifa on the earth a, a, a representative a uh, vice regent on the earth and so this name reminds us that uh we we've been sent as representatives of the divine that uh you know the the universe in a sense is a sign of allah's existence and as people who have been sent as representatives as people who have been sent as agents the the, the vice gerents of of allah the 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 universe then becomes not just a place where we're just out here and have no no idea what's going on this is a sign of allah's existence this is a sign of allah's existence and proof of that existence and all the different attributes allah has that lead us to faith that lead us to praise that lead us to then lead our own lives uh in a sense under this uh under this these qualities and and with the mindfulness that allah has created this so as we close with this name we reflect that when we think of al, uh, the the mulk al mulk we think about this name and we see that the whole universe, the whole mulk, the dominion, is consists of the universe of cre all creatures, all minerals, all elements, all planets, all animals, life forms, anything that you can take a look at. It's not just what's in your backyard. It's not just what's all around the neighborhood and what's in the earth or any of these uh, places on planet earth, but every single square inch of this universe, this expanding universe. And so... When we think about that, that is the dominion. That at the least, that's the that's the that's the created dominion. And you know, there's hidden, there's all this other stuff too. But in a sense, when we think about that, and when we think about how just spread out everything is, how large everything is, we then think about that all of this came from one, and all of this came from one. And when it comes from one, it's inherently when it's singular, that inherently means it is connected at some point. That everything is connected at some point. So you and the most distant part of the galaxy or the universe or wherever it might be, have a sense of connection. And that connection, it might not look in terms of just by our, uh, our, our DNA or our makeup, if there's that difference, but 
you have an inherent connection. So you and a rock flying through space uh, might not have a lot in common, might not look alike, uh, alike might not have the same Netflix, um, you know, just uh, top 10, but you do have an inherent connection to the divine. And there's something really powerful in that because everything then we recognize submits to the divine will. Everything is within this dominion and we are all uh, subjects. We are all participants within this dominion, inhabitants of this dominion. And so it makes us more mindful and respectful of our surroundings that not everything that is here is just by accident. Everything has been created for a purpose. And so we dwell, we reflect on what is that greater purpose, but also how does it remind me of Allah? So we take this name and we take in more mindfulness as we go through. And the last name that we have is uh, Dhul Jalali Wal Ikram. Dhul Jalali Wal Ikram is translated as the Lord of majesty and generosity, the one who is full of dignity and honor and the possessor of glory and honor. And it's a three-part name. So you have Dhu, which means possessor, Lord, owner, proprietor, gifted, or endowed with. You have Al Jalal, which is the all-encompassing, the powerful majesty, sublimity, splendor, and glory. And then you have Al Ikram, which is this unconditional, unconditionally loving generosity, uh, kindness, as well as honor. And so this name shows us that, uh, and it contains power and beauty, and it shows us how balanced this can be, that it's not just one or the other, there's, there's an inherent balance. And it shows the all embracing and omnipotent presence of uh, the divine, of the divine in everything that exists. And so when we look at the root of Jalal, we see meanings of being great, meanings of being beyond something, to be far above something, to be enumerate. You can't quantify it to honor, but also to dignify and to envelope. And so illustrious, lofty, exalted, all these things, you get the connotations of it. And all forms of power or strength come from this Jalal. And then you have Al-Ikram, which is nobler, distinguished, more precious, more valuable, most honorable, most generous, and all forms of perfection and beauty. And so the name brings this balance in terms of when we deal with power, when we deal with control, but when we deal with generosity and when we deal with wastefulness. So it, it shows this balance, the balance that exists because Allah is open-handed and generous and loves those who are generous, but Allah is also above all, is the most uh, glorious, most powerful, most sublime. And the convergence of dignity and power come in this name, dignity and power, as well as beauty and kindness. And so as we close out with this name, this name brings us to mind that Allah is all that, that, that we can, that we picture that we might've been taught in a sense of Allah just being above every single thing that is there, that uh, in terms of there's no comparison to us and Allah or the creation and Allah, because Allah is just on another plane or just completely different level but Allah is still the most generous. Allah is still that attribute which is close. So we have in this name two different kind of attributes. You have an Allah in the sense that is, is acknowledged that is just beyond being attained in a sense that Allah is just way up there, but then also Allah is near. Allah is close. And we lifted up some verses from the Quran in which Allah says that, uh, you know, he is nearer to the, to the worshiper than their own jugular vein. He's nearer to a uh, to to their to them as if you know it's it's just within the body within just that that's how close Allah is and when when the servants of Allah ask about Allah the, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says tell them I'm near and so we have in this name uh, to you know this this seemingly di this dichotomy that exists but it's actually a complement in a sense like so many of the other names we covered here that complement one another in this one name you have three attributes but or three elements but you have uh, these two aspects of jalal and ikram that complement each other beautifully in aspects of majesty but also in aspects of generosity so not too often will you see a ruler who's on top of everything who's there but is also in the trenches is there is generous is uh, honoring the creation is honoring the subjects and so inshallah we conclude with these names but we'll close out with the dhikr but we remind ourselves dhul jalali wal ikram reminds us to uh, remember uh, allah in a sense that allah might we might feel so small before allah but allah is near us allah is closer to us than our jugular veins and it's intentional that allah compliments us we look at Malikul Mulk that we are all connected to every single thing that is around us. So we were mindful that 
none of this is ours. This is, this is all Allah's and we are part of this. And so how do we treat this properly? How do we live in this, this dwelling properly? Because my, being mindful that we, we aren't the owners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner. And lastly, that at the end of the day, Allah is Ar-Ra'uf. Allah is mild. Allah is kind. Allah is compassionate and friendly. So when we make mistakes, uh, we, 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 we sincerely uh, own up to them because we, we are confident that we have a God. We have Allah who is Ar-Ra'uf, who is kind, who is open-armed and welcoming and accepting of repentance, as we discussed last time. So inshallah, let us go ahead and conclude with the uh, recitation of the dhikr of these names. And uh, we'll close out with there. Bismillah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Ar-Ra'uf, 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 Ar-Ra'uf. Ar-Ra'uf, 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 Ar-Ra'uf. Ya Ra'uf, 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 Ya Ra'uf. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Malikul mulki, malikul mulk, 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 ya malikul mulk, ya malikul mulk, ya malikul mulk, ya malikul mulk. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Dhul jalali wal ikram, dhul jalali wal ikram, dhul jalali wal ikram, dhul jalali wal ikram. Dhul jalali wal ikram, dhul jalali wal ikram, dhul jalali wal ikram, dhul jalali wal ikram. Ya dhul jalali wal ikram, ya dhul jalali wal ikram, ya dhul jalali wal ikram, ya dhul jalali wal ikram. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. So friends, inshallah, go out today. Remind ourselves to be kind. Remind ourselves that we are in a dominion of Allah. Remind ourselves that Allah is most majestic, but also most generous. And that we are in a in a faith, in a tradition in which Allah is all encompassing, all forgiving, uh, and that we are inherently connected to everything around us and responsible for this and not exclusive to it all. So inshallah, we'll see you all tomorrow. Just, I believe, four more sessions left and uh, we'll, we'll inshallah be wrapping up soon. So less than 15 names left there, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, jazakallah khair, Amanda, jazakallah khair for coming, everybody. Have a good weekend and a uh, good day. Get some sleep, inshallah.